In the early history of humankind, when all societies worshipped nature, they expressed the relationships with water via beliefs and serpentine beings, snake-like dragons represented in multiple cultural forms. According to human belief, these beings were the creators, totemic ancestors, guardian spirits, and lawmakers. From the Legend of Zelda series, dragons are pretty prevalent within its mythology. Whether they were friends with the goddess Hylia or perhaps linked to the Triforce, each dragon served a duty in safeguarding Hyrule's fields, waterways, and even cherished artifacts. Formally, most Zelda dragons are spirits from a long, unremembered past, classified as beings from another world or the heavens. Yet, as we look at them throughout Breath of the Wild and even Tears of the Kingdom, there's a lot to theorize on their true origin. For one, why do they even exist in the Zelda series at all? What was their eternal purpose within the history of the Zonai, and what did Nintendo want to imply for these celestial beings? The dragons of Zelda are considerably more terrifying and mysterious than we ever expected expected, as we will see within this video. But viewer discretion is advised because there are Tears of the Kingdom story spoilers within this video. But without further ado, let's begin. From what we witness within the Zelda series, the dragons come in all forms, and plainly speaking, they are specified to be one who coins both sides of forces, good and evil. Aquamentis is the first dragon encountered within the Legend of Zelda series and serves as the boss of the first dungeon. Plus, the deadly three-headed dragon, Agliok, has been a boss fought later within the games. Ocarina of Time had Volvagia, a dragon-like boss within the Fire Temple, and Twilight Princess had a mini-boss who roared within the City of the Skies. All of these enemies were opponents against the hero. So, while we can assume that many of these dragons are, of course, evil and servants of maybe the dark underworld held by Demise or even Ganon, dragons within Zelda are also meant to be protectors. Spirits who forge alliances with the goddesses. And according to Skyward Sword, long ago the water dragon was charged with watching over all of Farron by the goddess, who has the power over water for Hyrule's land. Farron, in this case, was a servant of the goddess Hylia, who protected the service and Skyward Sword. And in Breath of the Wild, they were known as servants of the springs. No one has actually seen these dragon spirits, though, in the current age before the rise of the Calamity, but their existence still spread through legends and old sayings. Each dragon served the springs of power, wisdom, and courage. With all of that being stated, dragons within the Zelda series delve into duality of both being good and evil. Duality, or binary composition, is fundamental to water serpent beings expressing many conceptual dualities. These include foundational polarities of order and disorder. Dragons in Zelda do the same within their mythology. While dragons in one instance can sustain and portray order within Hyrule, they are also capable of pandemonium, threatening and destabilizing social and material arrangements, inducing tipping points that can lead to what many call the collapse of this world. Hence why Zelda's dragons are capable of flooding an environment like we saw in Skyward Sword. Or of course, causing chaos among the Rito people with one of Valu's rampages that caused a boulder to crash down the mountain. These dragons aren't just innocent. And in real world mythologies, dragons can lurk within the individual psyche and represent the seething inner sea of instincts and emotions. Or they can reflect tensions and fluid capacities for disorder at a societal level, such as the chaos represented by war or revolution. So at a cosmic level, Level, dragons can represent apocalyptic events, such as the Great Flood, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, and even tsunamis. A restless serpent legend is being said to lie beneath Japan which causes their earthquakes and tsunamis. But this is obvious, and kind of what I'm explaining is just an understatement. Dragons are far from what we imagined when they come from Tears of the Kingdom. Not only are they servants, but enemies. And not only are they enemies, but somehow coming from an unknown source, and not as immortal as we would like to believe. Be that as it may, this is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Dragons are far from being short of all these multifaceted concepts within its mythology for Tears of the Kingdom and even Breath of the Wild. Their forces within Hyrule's concept of death to rebirth are pretty prevalent within these chapters in Zelda, so that has to lead us to discuss the deity account. 
Dragons in all form or matter come from a lot of ancient ideologies, one being that they had something to do with creation. And in Zelda, this isn't any different. The dragons are somewhat, if not, involved with the creation to Hyrule. The argument is that the dragons in Zelda are similar to deities and had a part to play in some style. A similar model characterizes the classical Maya creation stories, in which serpents or saurian creatures were the forms upon which the world rested, between the underworld and the heavens. Dragons throughout mythology somehow have the ability to transport between the heavens of the afterlife to the realms of mortality. And according to Zelda's encyclopedia, they are just cryptically defined as spirits, having an astral form different from physical matter. While their true form is technically invisible, they can reveal themselves and communicate by living within or taking on material forms. Skyward Sword's dragons are defined as spirits as well, who watch and guard the land, and Wind Waker, the dragon named Valu, is simply defined as a fire spirit, who awaits the reincarnation of every hero, Link. And this makes sense to human belief, right? Spirits, which are supernatural and incorporeal or immaterial beings, are said to transverse through spaces for not just the underworld, the hells, or heavens, but to earthly reality. Dragons, in some sense, could be mediators of not just Hyrule, but the sacred realm, which held the power of the Triforce. Of course, we are just merely theorizing through human mythology, but it does hold some merit to the speculation in some manner. While Zelda might mention their simplistic terms as just spirits, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom imply otherwise. These beings are not just spirits, but connected to many other things beyond their mere definition. They were formerly worshipped in lost cultures such as the Zonai. So why exactly were they venerated to this position? Are we overlooking more than the simple, basic characterization they have? Well, this is the case, and it's from the Zonai Connection. It is said that my ancestors were born from a union with gods who had descended from the heavens. The Zonai were a revered race within the kingdom of Hyrule. Legends state that they possessed godlike powers and had a prosperous civilization within the skies. Much is little to be stated about them other than the obvious, the Zonai are no longer gracing this world with their presence, and those that we have seen are just mere remnants to their race. So why are we bringing up the Zonai? Well, it's because they are the closest link to the origin of the dragons, and according to Creating a Champion, the Lost Tribe revered a water dragon, and their stone artwork represented the Triforce through the representation of prehistoric tribes. They used dragons to represent courage, owls to represent wisdom, and boars to represent power. Something that I realized for a while when playing Breath of the Wild and now Tears of the Kingdom is that the Zonai not just relates to, but derives from Mesoamerican civilizations and their ancient technology. The most prominent proof comes from the architecture of their temples. For instance, the Aztec and Zonai have the same plumed serpent, the Quetzalcoatl, the name of the important Mesoamerican deity who was worshipped throughout the region in one form or another for 1200 years. The Ouroboros is also prominently shown on the doors in the sky's Temple of Time from Tears of the Kingdom. Nowhere is humanity's hope for renewal more precisely encapsulated than the image of the Ouroboros, the circular serpent that, with its tail in its mouth, represents an internal flow of death and rebirth in which there is a constant renewal. So why are these here? Well, the Zonai connection to dragons seeps within their culture. That's evident. So why exactly are they connected and revered in such a way? Well, again, if we can theorize that the Zonai are related to Mesoamerican cultures, is that in a way, dragons and their culture were given unto them as gods and could be become one through process of ritual, very similar to what we see in Tears of the Kingdom, but let's back up on some thoughts to analyze. For one, we do know at one point, according to Ganon, Zelda, and many Hylians who recorded the Kingdom of Hyrule, they truly did consider the Zonai to be gods who inhabited the skies. Perhaps in Breath of the Wild, the Zonai did revere a water dragon, or many, many of whom were already revered due to draconification. To become an immortal dragon is to lose oneself. That is why it is forbidden. 
One thing we can already understand is that this act was done before, and perhaps many times for it to be considered forbidden. It makes me wonder if this process was something ritualistic until they fully realized they themselves are no longer Zonai anymore. Mythology throughout ancient cultures believed in a similar ritual as well. The Egyptian Book of the Dead contains an incantation in which, by transforming into a serpent, a person becomes immortal. And draconification is no different. From the ancient texts we have to the implications that Zonai committed this act. Dragons are not what they seem throughout Breath of the Wild, and now Tears of the Kingdom. These dragons are actually people. To start, Zelda and Ganon's dragon forms are similar to their physical attributes, for instance like their hair and ear distinctions. Dinral, Farash, and Nadra have goat-like ears similar to the Zonai characterizations we see in Tears of the Kingdom, like Minoru and Raru have. They also have white hair just like Raru, and plus their Zonai armor in Tears of the Kingdom look like they were worn by them. Either way, the armor being a Zonai relic and sharing such a resemblance to Farash, Nadra, and Dinral is in my mind a confirmation that these three dragons were indeed Zonai. These dragons probably did a deed to protect the springs who would further a lineage of Hyruleans containing the Triforce. Or perhaps they were the oracles of the Zonai tribe, due to their connections to the springs of power, wisdom, and courage. They could themselves have swallowed their secret stones in order to become dragons, dragons who protected each of these divine springs, and perhaps were revered by the Zonai for their sacrifice. But honestly, who knows? A culture's beliefs and values are co-constituted by how they engage materially with their environments. The Zonai's draconification could merely be a folly to their population and maybe even culture, but a folly that led to threads of time being their ally. The dragons are perhaps spirits from a long time past, or perhaps they're actually people themselves. And with that origin, it might be horrifying to some, losing oneself to transformation, but for others, it is a sacrifice, a duty beyond the reach mortality could never handle. And perhaps cultures revere this as dragons in such a different light than one would like to think so. But with that, we are going to wrap up. Again, if you haven't subscribed for more theory content like this, I really love doing these, so please if you can, do so. But I also want to hear your thoughts on dragons within the Zelda series. Who are the dragons in Breath of the Wild? What do we think of draconification? Comment these thoughts down below, I usually read all of my comments. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.